Hi, I'm Mike Madison, Yale College Class of 1983 and the past chair of the Association of Yale Alumni. Welcome to the live stream of the Web Forum for Alumni in connection with the search for the next president of Yale. I'm here as the moderator in my role as alumni counselor to the Presidential Search Committee. I am joined today by two members of the committee. I'll ask each of them to introduce themselves. Thank you, Mike. My name is Chip Goodyear. I am the, uh, the, pre I'm the chairman of the search committee for the next president of Yale. I was a Pearson class of 1980, and I'm also a member of the corporation. Hi, I'm Donna Dubinsky, I'm Yale class of 77, JE, since we're doing colleges. And um, I am a member of the Yale Corporation and a member of the search committee. When I'm not on uh, Yale business, I am a technology entrepreneur based in California. Thanks, Mike. I'm Rick Lifton. I'm Sterling Professor and Chair of the Department of Genetics in the Medical School here at Yale. My background is uh, I came to Yale as an assistant professor in 1993, and I've been here since. My laboratory works on discovering genes that contribute to human diseases that range from cancer to cardiovascular disease. Uh, our most recent contribution has been the development of new technology for sequencing all the genes in the human genome very rapidly and inexpensively, and this has enabled us to make the first genetic diagnosis by DNA sequencing of a young child uh, at the genome uh, level. Uh, Yale has uh, been a spectacular place for me and my family as uh, I've been here over the last uh, 20 years, and I'm pleased to be with you today. So the question is, uh, in addition to capacity for successful leadership of Yale as an educational institution, to what degree is the search committee prioritizing capacity to inspire service to society that is so much a part of Yale's history and tradition? There's no doubt this is a very important part of Yale's history and tradition, and it's something that um, I think we're seeing undergraduates have more and more interest in and feel is more and more important. It's, it's been very interesting to watch the evolution, I think, from my generation, the current generation, where uh, we see students feeling this is just critically important to have in a future president to continue these kind of activities, uh, from Dwight Hall to fellowships to service abroad to uh, all sorts of different activities. So I think this is something that uh, the next president needs to value and that, that we'll look for as a, as a strength. I, absolutely, I would agree. And if you look at Yale's mission statement, which is something that probably you don't do very often, you'll see that the last comment is talking about leadership in scholarship, in, uh, in society, and in the professions. And that society part is actually part of Yale's mission. Let's uh, transition to uh, something that talks about uh, international experience. And uh, this goes not just to Yale's presence internationally, but also to the attributes of the president him himself or herself. Uh, so the, the question or the comment really for reflection is this. As Yale aspires to take its place as a global university and to ensure its full international credentials, uh, I believe, says the, the, right, the alum, that the next president of Yale should have lived and worked outside the U.S. for several years. Only by living in a different culture will the true sensitivity of the next president be more heightened. The perspective of looking at one's own nation and culture from the eyes of an expatriate is truly eye-opening. What do you think? I think that is a wonderful question and statement. I think that that's been my experience. I've spent 15 years living overseas from Australia to China to the UK. And as captured in that, in that question slash comment, you can't appreciate the U.S., the world, what's happening around the globe until you've actually lived in a different society. And I have to say, though, that's a very rare opportunity. It'd be nice if we could give everybody that chance. And as you know, Yale is trying to do that with their, with their undergraduates, and I think making a very good, uh, very, good, uh, very good progress in that direction. With regard to whether the next president will have had that experience, clearly I'd see it as a positive. But we also have to look at it in the context of those people, that, that set of people that may be on that list of candidates. And if they've lived over there, that's great. We can't put that as a hard and fast because, again, we are evolving as a global community where that cross-border experience of living and working is still not something that, that, that all generations have had a chance to do. 
So let's be a little bit more focused on the international aspect and turn to the topic of Yale's partnership with the National University of Singapore and the launch of the Yale NUS College. Uh, the question is, from an alum, President Levin has said that the Yale NUS College in Singapore will figure as an important part of his presidential legacy. My question is how the future of this college will figure in interviews with candidates to replace President Levin. Sure, let me take that. Uh, first of all, as I said earlier, Yale's commitment to the globalization is, is crystal clear. It comes from the corporation. It has the support. And there's many things that have happened in that globalization activity uh, during President Levin's tenure. It's, as I mentioned, students living overseas and having part of their experience as undergraduates overseas. It's involved the World Fellows Program. It's obviously involved many people coming to the Yale campus from overseas to share their experience. Uh, Yale and U.S. is another example of the implementation of that globalization process. And that is something that is moving forward. And will our conversations with the, with the candidates for the next president of Yale involve globalization? You bet it will. Whether Yale and U.S. is part of that, that's going to be a function of what they know and what questions they have. Um, but we're certainly perfectly willing to talk about that. And again, we see it as one of the key elements of that. Uh, and it will be part of the conversation in some way. So we certainly will, will have that discussion. From the alumni's perspective, in terms of the comments that we've received, a lot of the comments and a number of the questions that came in really take that kind of diversity and reduce it to a sort of a single axis. A number of alumni have asked questions and raised concerns about the next president's focus on and interest in the humanities and making sure that Yale's traditional strengths in the humanities are preserved, respected, and, and supported, uh, and related to that, traditional strengths in the arts. Uh, including the professional schools in the arts, art, architecture, drama, and music. On the other end of that same spectrum are alumni who have said fairly directly in some of the questions we've received, I believe that Yale should uh, appoint a scientist or should appoint an engineer as its next president because of the emerging and obvious importance of science and technology in modern life, whether that's the internet and computer technology or biotechnology, genetic engineering, uh, and all of it, that the importance of those things in daily life, those things in terms of the research life of the university, the importance of those things in the teaching and the educational experience that our students uh, are exposed to. I wonder if you could comment on uh, how that issue is reflected in the committee's deliberations. Yeah, I, I think I would come back to the general point, and I think we've benefited in the last uh, 20 years. You know, virtually the entire time I've been here, Rick Levin has uh, been the president uh, at Yale. And I think one of his strongest qualities has been his ability to understand issues that arise in the whole academy that uh, exists at, at Yale. And so I think uh, people on the, who have been on the faculty uh, during that time have recognized that, uh, uh, particularly just speaking from my own experience as a faculty member in the medical school, that uh, Rick is not medically trained, he doesn't have a background in the sciences, uh, yet, and yet he was very effective at understanding key issues in the development of the sciences uh, at the medical school across uh, his tenure. And so I have come to the position and the understanding that you don't need a direct uh, experience in a discipline in order to be able to understand the issues, but you have to be very open-minded, very inquisitive, and a very quick study. And I think these are issues that uh, will, I think we will be looking for uh, in the next uh, president. I fortunately think uh, there is no necessary dichotomy between uh, being interested in the humanities and being interested in the sciences. I think most people that you find on the Yale campus are broadly inquisitive and genuinely take advantage of the full range of activities that exist uh, here at, uh, at Yale and in the local community. And that really is one of the tremendous strengths of Yale. The cost of attending Yale uh, is extraordinary just the, 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 the face amount of tuition and other expenses, both for undergraduates and for graduate and professional students at Yale. So what, uh, what role is the cost 
of a Yale education playing in your thinking about uh, identifying Yale's next president, or is it trying to reduce the cost or otherwise support students and access to education? If you could reflect on, on those themes a bit, it would be helpful. You know, it, it's a problem. It's a problem not just at Yale, but clearly through the whole country. It's, it's just a uh, really hard problem in terms of the escalation of, of costs in the uh, research universities, um, I think particularly. Um, it's, it's expensive. Um, you know, getting great faculty is expensive. Building uh, great facilities is expensive. And um, doing incredible world-class research is expensive. All these things are expensive. Uh, the interesting thing, though, when you dig into the numbers is that actually tuition, as high as it is, which I agree, only covers something like 30% of the cost of Yale College. So uh, fortunately, we're able to supplement that cost through the earnings of our uh, endowment and our, our fabulous team there that's uh, managed endowment, as well as the generosity of our uh, alumni and friends who have um, continued to support the university. And that helps supplement the cost uh, of that tuition. So if, if we actually ask people to pay the full amount, it would be a, a, a great deal more. Um, of course, it's critically important in our view, and we hope in the next president's view, that uh, we enable access to a Yale education by those who don't afford it. I, I'm not sure the number, I think something like 50% of the students get some sort of financial aid, so it's a very large number. We have needs blind admissions. We don't let that stop people from attending Yale. Um, but at the same time, we have to work harder to get a grip on these costs. We, we just have to figure out how to do it. And, uh, we have worked on that. There's a lot of things being done in the administrative area to be more efficient in the areas where we can, to do a better job on infrastructure, on information technology, all these things uh, I think can help make us more efficient and can save money. Uh, but, but it's a hard problem. And something that I know, Rick, is, is very live in your world in the medical school, which is technology transfer and the impact of the university's research program on the community around it. And for example, Yale's engagement, not only with the city of New Haven, but also the, the transfer of the Yale's research uh, into the world at large. Uh, how much of a priority are those issues to the search committee in the appointment of the next president? So I think it's critical to recognize that there is a role for technology transfer in developing the economy in the region. Certainly there are uh, biotechnology corridors that are better developed uh, than New Haven. Uh, Boston and the Bay Area come immediately to mind where spin-offs coming out of uh, the university have really helped fuel uh, the local economy. I think critical to that is not losing the point that Yale's primary mission is not to create new companies and uh, uh, new jobs. Uh, that is something that might happen as a consequence of work that goes on in basic research but it's not the purpose of uh, a university. Uh, but being able to transfer that technology out in a way that can support uh, these other missions, I think is a useful benefit. This is from an alum who writes, Yale is behind the times, computer-wise, whether in web-based courses or in the multitude of other uses, both known and unknown and not likely to be developed at Yale. Uh, with all due respect, it appears that this is a serious deficiency and we need to fix it. If you want to reflect on this both from the standpoint of a member of the Board of Trustees of the corporation and also from the standpoint of a member of the, the faculty and how it impacts, you think it impacts the lives of the students and the faculty here. Well, I'll just comment on the point about uh, Yale's strengths and weaknesses. And uh, I think uh, if you were to think about areas that Yale could do better in, I, I do think computation and engineering are both areas that uh, uh, Yale could be stronger in. And I think uh, uh, there's definitely room to improve and grow those problems. I mean, there's very strong faculty here in those areas, uh, but I think if you compare Yale to uh, the other leading research uh, institutions uh, across the country, uh, those are areas that uh, we could stand further growth in. When it comes to uh, education, clearly we're in uh, a, a real transition in terms of how students should be spending their time and the balance between uh, classroom time uh, and time spent uh, outside the classroom uh, engaged in uh, 
learning in different ways. Uh, in the medical school, it's clear that uh, many of the traditional lecture courses uh, really don't have the same salience for our students today that uh, they did 20 years ago, that the density of information transfer through a lecture frequently is just not uh, as good as what students can at achieve by other means. And I think we need to be thinking about how we use our uh, face-to-face -face classroom time uh, and thinking about uh, using that more for interactive problem solving than for didactic lectures. Yeah, you know, the use of technology here is a real passion of mine. I come from the technology industry. Um, I have worked with a, a group of other alums through the years on a, a committee we've called Digital Yale to advise the university. I, I do think we're coming uh, a bit from behind here, but I, I think we, we have more going on than a, a lot of people know and some very exciting initiatives. I certainly want to uh, point our alumni community to the Open Yale courses, uh, which are more about you know, dissemination of information than the um, interactive teaching that goes on on campus. But some of our best professors have, uh, have put their lectures up there, and they're, they're really fabulous. They're, they're wonderful stuff, worth checking out. Um, in addition, we have done some experimentations for the last two summers here at Yale of four-credit undergraduate courses uh, with some of the, you know, faculty that's been willing to experiment and try to push this technology forward. And we've learned a lot from that. We've learned what things to do, what things not to do, and we've learned how to start to make that a, a really great experience that a Yale student could still interact with Yale faculty um, but maybe be doing an internship somewhere and still be able to pick up a credit while they're away. So, uh, so we're doing work in that, and, and I think we've got to do more, and I think we will do more. So I, I think as the technologies evolve and the platforms sort of evolve and settle in, uh, we're going to be paying close attention. We're going to be doing experimentation, and the next president is going to have to be helping to lead this process of figuring out how do we take advantage of this stuff to help really improve learning and education at Yale. Previously, on behalf of an alum about the, the next president's international background, how important is it to the committee that the next president of Yale come from within the Yale family? Either somebody who uh, has a Yale degree, or has a Yale college degree, or is presently a member of the Yale faculty or administration? Uh -huh. You know, we've talked quite a bit about that, and we've had a lot of input on, on that question through the course of our discussions, of course. And, and I would say that, you know, it it's, would be a real plus to have somebody who has some Yale interaction, some you know, maybe having been part of the faculty now or at some point in the past, having been a student, you know, that's, those are all, I think they would be viewed as pluses. Um, we don't think, however, it's, it's a must-have. We think it is possible that there could be a great leader who is from another institution, if they're able to listen, absorb a culture, relate to people well, that they could also be extremely successful. So uh, we've kind of put it in the column of uh, nice to have, a plus, but not an absolute requirement. As you know, in my inbound alumni counselor, Mailbox, there have been a, a number of themes that have recurred over and over in the, the hundreds of emails that I've gotten so far, and uh, one of them is globalization and internationalization. We've talked about that. A second one is athletics, and the role of athletics at Yale, and the traditions of athletics at Yale, and the role of the president of Yale and the leadership of Yale in supporting athletes, supporting athletics, supporting our athletic teams. Um, so let me just set that as the, the foundational mm. sort of theme for what I think will be two or three questions here. Uh, so uh, the first comment uh, is, please select a president who values and emphasizes athletics. Yale has a rich tradition of athletics, countless Olympians, the oldest collegiate rugby club, the second most national football championships in the NCAA. This person writes, I was not a varsity athlete. But one of my criteria for applying to any college was that they had a tradition of athletics, especially football. Being a fan alongside a sea of others is one of the greatest experience anyone can have at college. I understand that Yale will not and should not sacrifice academic excellence in order to grab the top recruits. But Stanford is certainly on our level academically, yet it is one of the best athletic schools in the country as well. So this is a theme that clearly touches the entire student experience, not just the lives of athletes, but clearly I've heard also from athletes themselves about their experiences and their desire to have support uh, and reinforcement for their efforts and their ambitions as part of their Yale experience. Would you like to comment on that? You know, 
We've gotten a lot of feedback on this issue. Uh, I think we've heard the message loud and clear, and, and I think it's important to say that athletics is important at Yale. It's, it's a part of uh, the fabric of the community. I think it's incredibly important for learning leadership skills, team skills, learning about winning and losing. I think it's important just for the community to have something to kind of rally behind um, the teams. Uh, it, it has to fit into our overall Yale community. Uh, you know, one of the wonderful things about Yale is, is how many of these passions there are, whether it's, you know, the people who are doing social justice and out working in the community and teaching kids, you know, in the New Haven community, or whether it's the whiff and poofs, um, there, there are lots and lots of uh, different things where people can direct their energies, learn leadership skills, learn team skills, uh, be a part of something that helps bring us all together. So, you know, I think that any discussion with any future president is going to make sure that they have the same view of athletics as an important component of the Yale community and the Yale experience. It, it just seems like that, that would be a part of what we would want to see. I don't know, Chip was, Chip was an athlete, so I think, you know, Chip may have other views on this. Well, no, I think that's right, Donna. I think the comment that athlete, athletics fits in the entire tapestry of what Yale is about. But it does bring many of the things. We talked about that mission statement and, and uh, the contribution to society and those issues of leadership and teamwork and so on are things we want to we want to emulate in people who will uh, obviously take leadership roles around the world. I, I spent four years with the uh, rowing on the crew here at Yale. Uh, John Rice is also a member of the search committee and the corporation. John played basketball at Yale. So we do have in representation in both the committee and the corporation people who have had that experience. I would also say, although the alumni have also been quite uh, uh, interested in the athletics here, the students are, and it's not just the student athletes, the students are, uh, are very interested in Yale and Yale's performance. There are, there are many sports we do quite well in, and we see that record. And that's great to have, and we want those things. It brings that camaraderie that I, that your, your, uh, the, the comment uh, captured, and and that's important again in the tapestry of what we're all about. We, as you said, we're not going to be an Alabama, we're not going to be uh, a Texas in the guard of uh, the football field. But but can we have programs that give us things that we can rally around? It certainly is part of that tapestry of what we're about. So if we could turn a little bit to a new topic, I'm going to characterize this as uh, campus climate. And uh, in this area, the questions come from different perspectives and raise different themes, but I think that they all could be grouped as sort of campus climate questions. So the first comment uh, is, uh, I think, uh, is, these are all going to be provocative, to be honest, uh, but the first uh, is obviously provocative. The alum writes, I have been concerned that Yale has been leaning more and more extremely to the political left. And I hope you will choose someone who is relatively apolitical or even conservative and prioritize learning and teaching over political whims. I can, I can take my thoughts on that. We say in the search statement that, and I think we're pretty clear, that in the area of ethics and the area of excellence, those things, there's not a scale to that. So those two things are a must-have. And we have a list of criteria, and listen, we're going to have to trade off on those things. But when we think about the next president of Yale and that issue of performance, we don't qualify it by gender, we don't qualify it by religion, we don't qualify it by race, and we don't qualify it by political uh, uh, leanings one way or another. Um, I would guess as far back, certainly as far back as I can remember, it's always been Yale leans to the left. Um, when you look at some of the surveys of students, you don't necessarily see quite that. So the, the additional theme that I think is brought out by the changes since the mid-1970s is not only the changing nature of, of college athletics, but also the changing nature of, of the role of women. Uh, and not just in, in sport, but in the, in the yeah, university right. in general. And so I wanted to draw that out, and, and I've had a number of alumni contact me as part of this search process and say, in effect, it's time for Yale to appoint a woman as the president of Yale. And, and related to that are, are related themes about uh, gender, uh, the recent research that was 
discussed in the New York Times about uh, subconscious bias uh, in the sciences with respect to women. Uh, and if you could sort of comment on, on sort of how the committee might have discussed or might view uh, gender and other diversity concerns with respect to the search. Well, we want to make sure we have a very diverse pool to look at. There's no doubt that, you know, we have hundreds of names on our list at this point and, and um, many women and um, underrepresented minorities and, and a vast array of people. Um, I think in the end when it comes to selection, what's most critical to us is to get the best possible person and that is irrespective of gender, of race, of whether they're international or not or, you know, any specific characteristic. Um, we need it to be somebody who respects diversity and it's uh, somebody who really values that and, as an integral part of the, out of the campus. But um, I don't think that, that we feel that should, should dictate you know, the, that person themselves, the specifics of that person. I think it's really important to be aware of the potential for hidden bias and to make sure that uh, that's taken into account. I think it's fair to uh, acknowledge that uh, other universities have uh, appointed women as president. I think it would be a wonderful thing if uh, Yale were to, uh, to do that. Uh, we also have uh, produced presidents who have come from uh, Yale right. and uh, gone on to very successful careers as presidents uh, at other institutions. And I, I think it would be terrific to uh, have a woman president at Yale. The issue is yet a different topic, which is the city of New Haven. Yeah. Uh, under uh, Rick Levin's leadership, uh, anyone who's been back to campus over the last uh, 15 years has seen a remarkable turnaround, still in progress, uh, but it's sort of the demeanor of New Haven and of the demeanor of Yale's engagement with New Haven in a variety of senses in terms of the physical presence of the university and how it engages with the community. But also, of course, this has a lot to do with the interaction between the university and the residents of New Haven, uh, just in terms of day-to-day -day life and also in terms of Yale's relationship with its labor unions. Um, so I wondered if you could comment on how Yale's evolving relationship with New Haven factors into your thinking about the future of the university and the role of the next president. You know, one, one thing that I was really remarking on in, in all the meetings I've had with, uh, particularly with uh, faculty and staff who, who reside here in New Haven, uh, when you ask, you know, what's gone well at, at Yale over the, the past uh, 10 to 20 years, this is number one on their list. Um, people are are uh, so excited and happy and grateful for the work that has been done to improve relations with, uh, with the city and to make this uh, a great place to live. How was the Presidential Search Committee constructing the pool of candidates? Well, the pool is, is coming from a lot of places. First of all, thank you, Mike. Your, the alumni have written in with, with many suggestions of uh, nominations. We've had many suggestions from people on campus, of course, and uh, we've also been working with a professional search firm who knows a lot of the community outside of uh, the community here and into international and around the world, so they have helped us to complete the list in, in other ways. And I, I shouldn't say complete the list because the list keeps growing. We continue to take uh, interesting ideas about people to look at. So it's really been uh, from a lot of different places that we've been getting input for possible candidates. We're continuing our, our outreach discussions. Those will continue on. Again, we never want to stop listening to what people are, are hearing or are telling us. And again, it's that unusual thing that may, that may be very uh, helpful to us that we would love to hear about. We are now moving into the process of taking our list and moving it down. We will begin a series of conversations uh, with individuals as we get to that point. The when part is we, we want to move on an expedited basis, but we're not going to race to, to simply get the job over with. We are going to identify what we believe is the, the, uh, uh, the best few candidates to present to the corporation for their decision. And what I would say is that this is not only an opportunity to think about the next president of Yale, it's a great opportunity to think about Yale. And the fact that we are using this and, and have the real privilege to talk to students, faculty, alumni, uh, the city and staff and so on is really just, it's, it's, as I say, it's a great privilege.